Okay, we're at the uh, exercise 10 now. All right, so we're, 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 sorry about that. Let me get my eraser out. I thought I had my um, highlighter. We're doing the materials for exercise number 10. Now, my, my gut feeling is that I, this is, it, it's going to get more and more difficult as time goes on. Like we're at section 10, and for some students, it's been very difficult, very trying. We're going to encourage you to move forward. But before moving forward, you might have to move backwards to other uh, prior chapters if you didn't master the material. That takes time, by the way. I'm not saying it's going to happen right away, all right? But the bottom line is we're hoping that you're reading over the material. That is, you're going through the contents. After going through the contents, which includes the examples, make sure you understand the examples that are presented to you. After that, you need to reinforce it with the problem set that he gives you. That's the exercises. That's really where you're learning material. You're not learning it by reading it or watching someone do examples. You learn it by doing exercises, all right? So what I want to do is I want to scroll through the work and uh, by that, what I mean is I'm going to just scroll through this and get an idea of what's happening over here. I, he does talk about roots. And I, I got to be honest with you, you know, some of the disagreements I have with, with Wells is um, he's, he's always trying to, you know, basically simplify things that, that might have more complicated meanings. But, but I, got, I got to be honest with you, nowadays, this is, you know, more modern. When we see the square root of x squared, we don't say it's x. But Wells goes through this rigmarole saying, oh, x is a positive or a non-negative number. Well, if it were, the answer would be x. But i got to be honest with you, I don't think I should put that restriction on it. I would just simply say absolute value of x. Now, this is going to require thinking on your part. It's going to require thinking. And certainly, I'm not going to say just for square roots. For any even roots, it requires thinking. The odd roots are really simple, though, by the way. It's the even roots that are tough. All right? So I'm going to say this has something to do with thinking. All right? Thinking takes time. It's not something to get it immediately. And it's not something that just tells you what to do. Think, 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 think. But again, they talk about, you know, roots. They talk about roots, all right? So I'm going to say this has something to do with roots, right? Something to do with roots. So what I want to do, I'm going to pretend I read through that section. And what I'd like to do is read through it. And again, the way I write an answer down may be different than the way Wells writes an answer down. Now, cube roots should provide no issues whatsoever. So the very first problem is a cube root. It should provide no troubles. But what I want to get across to you, I'm looking for the perfect uh, cubes. So let me write down 64. And I'm going to say 64 is 4 times 4 times 4, which is 4 cubed. All right, 4 times 4 is 16, times 4, well, it's 40, and 24 is 64. And I'm going to say x6 is also a perfect cube. And what's that going to be? x squared times x squared times x squared, which is x6. All right? So what are they looking for? On the problem like this, what they're looking for, they're looking for something raised to the third power. That would be 64. Well, I know what that is. That would be 4. Because 4 cubed is 64. All right? These are the perfect cubes up here. The next question is, you know, what raised to the third power would give you x6? Well, that would be x squared. Again, cube roots do not present a problem for us. We got the answer over there. Let's go to the next one. Fourth roots may present the problem. All right? I want to think about it. So my, my deal about this one over here, and I'll write this one down for you. You know, if I, if I thought about 81, and I'm looking for a perfect fourth, I'm going to say 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 81, and that's 3 to the fourth power. All right? Then if you look at m4, well, that looks pretty simple to me. It's just simply m times m times m times m, and that would be m4. That's not a problem. If I looked at n12, I'm going to say n cubed times n cubed times n cubed times n cubed. All right, and so someone says, what are you doing over there? I'm writing things down with four equal factors. All right? And again, this is where Wells is talking about, you know, you know, don't worry about the subtleties here. But I got to worry about them. I'll be honest with you. I have to worry about them. So I'm going to say what it is. Now, the 81, the first factor I'm looking at, that would just be 3. 
But I got trouble with the M. I got to think, right? So if M were negative, for example, M4 would be positive. However, if I put it over here, these are principal roots, and it couldn't be that if it were negative. So I have to put an absolute value symbol on it. Let me do the N. Now, again, if N were like negative, some negative number, it's a 12 hours positive number, and the fourth root of positive number is doable. It might be difficult, but it's doable. What I'm going to say over here is that I got to be really careful. You, you might say it's n cubed, but unfortunately, n cubed, let's say it were minus one, that would be, gee, that would be a negative number. I can't have that because it's the principal root. So, what we're going to do over here, we're going to put the absolute value symbol on it. We take care of that problem. This requires thinking. I kid you not. I really mean that. It requires thinking. What you may want to do, particularly those students that have access to a computer, is actually, you know, graph this and this and see the relationship between the two on a computer. Graph it, okay? Let's do the next one. Fifth roots provide no, no issues whatsoever for me. It's only the even powers I have to start thinking. So let's write this down. I'm going to write down to minus 32. And what's that going to be? I'll write down for you. It's minus 2 times minus 2 times minus 2 times minus 2 times minus 2, which is actually just minus 2 to the fifth power. All right? So minus 2 times minus 2 is 4, times minus 2 is minus 8, times minus 2 is 16, and then 16 times minus 2 is minus 32. Worked out beautifully. Now, again, if I look at A10, and I'm not saying you have to do this, by the way, but if I want to write down five equal factors for that, I want to get A10 in the end, what would that be? Well, I'm going to say A squared. Again, two factors, two factors, two factors, two factors, two factors, 10 factors. Now, if I put down B5, this is much easier, by the way, what I'm going to get B, 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 and that's B5. C15, hate to go there, but we'll go there. What's it going to be? C cubed, C cubed, C cubed. You do not need to write this down, by the way. To me, I find it incredibly tedious to write down. All right, was that going to be C15? So let's do, the, let's do the fifth root. So I'm basically looking for one of the five factors now, minus two. That's one of the five factors. A squared, one of the five factors. And then it's going to be B, one of the five factors. I'm just going through my factor list. And last but not least, it's going to be C cubed. Put a box on it. And I want to encourage you to read the answer where they say minus 2a squared b c cubed. Worked out beautifully. All right, more difficult. I'll tell you why. There's three terms there. So the, the thing you need to do is you need to see that the inside is actually a perfect square. This is square root. Square roots provide trouble, though. I'm going to write this down for you. All right, I'm going to write down what the square is, and I'll go through it with you. It's actually 2x plus 3y squared squared. Now, someone says, is that really true? Well, all I could say is, if you took 2x, I'll erase this in a second, by the way, 3y squared, and you were to square it, what would you get? Well, I'll write down for you. 2x plus 3y squared, 2x plus 3y squared. Again, I'm going to erase this a little bit, but a little bit later. 2x and 2x is 4x squared. Then you get 6xy squared plus 6xy squared, and then what do you get? Plus 9y to the fourth power. And that works out beautifully, by the way. You get 4x squared, and 6 and 6 is 12, 12xy squared, plus 9y4. So I'm going to erase now, because I, I really, I, I don't think I should, should, should have done that, other than the fact that I like to verify what we're saying is true. All right? So let me erase this business over here. I think I went too far in that one, didn't I? Okay. So someone's what are you going to do? And again, this is where Wells gets sort of, you know, wishy-washy about it. But I'm not going to get wishy-washy. i, I got to be honest with you. 2x plus 3y squared could be a negative number. But when you square it, it's positive. And when you take the square root of that positive number, you're going to get a positive number. So i got to be really careful about what I write over here. 
So I'm going to say it has something to do with 2x plus 3y squared, but it's got to be the absolute value of that. All right, why is that? These are principal roots. These answers are listed for you over here. And I'm using the conventions that we basically talk about in, um, in modern algebra now. All right? All right, let's look at this one over here. Same story. I'm looking for the perfect square. And that's what I do with square roots. And I'm going to say that's m minus n squared. Okay. M minus N could be negative. And if you took a negative number and square it, you get a positive number. So really what I say, what I know about the inside, it's always some non-negative number. It always is, right? Could be zero if M, and M equals N. But the bottom line is it's always some non-zero positive number. And you could take the square root of non-zero positive numbers. Well, it's square root, it's pencil root. It's got to be positive. So I'm going to say, just to play it safe, Absolute value, m minus n. All right, let's go to number six. And number six does factor. So, again, this is an opinion. I know it seems difficult, especially if you're really weak at factoring. All I can say is try something. All right? So then, then the question is, try what? Well, you got a leader. And you got a leader over here. Now, we believe it's a simple pattern, but I'm not saying we're at that stage yet. So I'm going to say, gee, if this is factorable, I'm going to say a really nice stab at it would be 5a. I'm not saying it's right, by the way. I'll check it for you later. And 5a. 5a times 5a is 25a squared. That really does work fine. Now, if I look at this over here, my claim is I think I can do that too. I'm just really worried about the middle term if I get that. So I'm going to say I'm going to say 4b cubed. And then what? Got to get some signs going. I hope it's not a guessing game for you, but let's write down what it might be. Now, when I say that, I'm not saying that that's true. I'm just saying I'm willing to try it. And what do you get? 25a squared plus, well, 5 times 4 is 20. Then you get ab cubed. Then what do you get? Plus 20ab cubed. And then what do you get? Plus 16b6. What do you get overall? 25a squared plus 40ab plus 16b squared. And again, is the question becomes, is it the same thing as this over here? And I hope you can, you can maybe my penmanship's not, oh, you know what, I made a mistake. Uh, my penmanship's not great, but I hope you realize it's really the same thing. You know, 20ab cubed plus 20ab cubed plus 40ab cubed. I'm clearly seeing that. And I got the first term and the last term, working out beautifully, all right? These answers are listed for you. Now, certainly what I mean by that, this answer is listed, but in a far more compact form. It's a perfect square problem. All right, let's look at number seven, and they want me to factor this over here. Again, my gut feeling is, I would just simply say, could I do it? I don't know, maybe I can't do it. So m squared, m squared, and at the very end, you got four and four, so I'm going to say, you know, maybe 2n squared and 2n squared. Because 2n squared times 2n squared is going to be 4n to the fourth power. And I'm going to kind of stand around it. I, I realize that this is difficult. I'm not saying it's easy for anyone. But the more you practice, really, it becomes really trivial when you start to practice things. And i, I got, got to be honest with you, if it's a really big factoring problem, I'm going to struggle with it, but these are not big problems. These are kind of small. So I'm going to say maybe it's something like this, minus, minus. Let's just do it. What do you get? We're going to check it. You would get m4 minus 2m squared, n squared, minus 2n squared. Uh, m squared plus 4n4. So do I get the first term? I sure do. Do I get the last term? Sure do. Do I get the middle one? And again, I know it's difficult, but I'm looking at it, you do get minus 4 m squared n squared. So I'm getting it. All right? So the deal about this over here, you know, you see a pattern. And this is the pattern over here. We just said it. Right? So I'm going to say this one over here. 
Someone says, how'd they get the other pattern? Let me go through that with you. So if they have m squared minus 2n squared, what they could do is factor out minus 1. What are you left off with? 2n squared minus m squared. This is for some sort of an easier to do. And the book does that too. All right? But anyway, we got our answer. We did okay. All right, this one here, again, it looks really strange to a lot of students. But to be honest with you, to me it looks like, you know, x squared minus 2x, some number here. I don't know what that is. And then what do I get over here? Plus that very same number, I have no idea what it is, squared. And I've seen those before. What does it look like? It looks like this over here. x minus the question mark. What would you get over there? It would be squared, right? So then the question is, you're looking at this over here. I hope you realize what you're looking at, all right? So what am I looking at? I'm looking at that something, right? And what is that something? It's y minus z. All right, let's write that down for you. So I'm going to say x minus, and what we're doing is we're doing y minus z. And I'll clean that up in a second. Now, granted, if you're doubting Thomas, which we don't, we're not opposed to it, do more work. Expand it if you have to. What do you get over here? X minus Y plus Z quantity squared. The deal's over. My recommendation, though, is look at the answer key. And this is where some students look and they say, my God, your answer is wrong. Or my answer is wrong, whatever. But I, I do want to point out, I do see this over here. Whoops, sorry about that. I did it again. I see this. But someone says, where did this come from? Let me go through that again with you. What you could do is factor out minus one. And we're left off with, you'd be left off with y minus x minus z. And this is quantity squared. What's minus one squared? It's one. So what would you get? You would get y minus x minus z squared. Now granted, it's not exactly like this one over here. But I hope you have enough reasoning skills to know it's equivalent. It's really the same thing, all right? So it's still y minus z minus x. It really is. Someone says, why'd you put it in that order? Well, the order I put it over here is reverse alphabetical order. There's nothing wrong with that. You can do that. Let's look at this one over here. Many ways to do it. Don't think there's only one way to do these problems over here. My recommendation is to factor out the minus 1. You do not need to follow that recommendation. You can still factor it if you don't do that. 9a4 plus 6a squared minus 1. I'm having suspicions that this thing is a perfect square, but let's take a look at it. Minus 1, 3a squared, 3a squared, 1 and 1. I'm looking at it, and it looks like minus... Oh, I'm sorry, it's plus 1. I couldn't have done it otherwise. It looks like plus 1, plus 1. I'm glad I caught errors because I was going to say I can't factor that. So let's see what do you get up here. You would get minus 3a squared plus 1 quantity squared. Look at the key. And again, your hope is you're looking at the same answer. If you're not, though, you've got to start saying, why is their answer different than mine? And try to come to some reconciliation with it. All right? And again, that, that might not be easy. Ooh, we're done with that. So what's next? Exercise. What do you do with Exercise. Try to do some of the problems, all right? Now, of course, when I say that, I really think you should do every single problem they give you. But again, you might be overwhelmed. You might be exhausted. You may not have the time to do all the problems. Just give it a shot, all right? Again, I say that I'm using uh, today's convention. Uh, Wells was using the convention, I guess, in 1904, which to me seemed a little bit uh, strained. But you know what? It, it's fine. It's, I'm not saying it's a bad technique. We still do it in algebra today where we, we, we give a an instructional preamble and saying, oh, that the, um, you don't need to worry about the, 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 um, the, um, the radicand. You know, they, they basically say it's all positive integer, all right? Okay, so there's problems over here. And um, get through them. I really do mean that. And then look at the SAGE code. Again, if you need to reach out to me, uh, my email address again is Bannon, that's B as in boy, A, N, N, O-N dot U-S. And again, thank you for paying attention. 
I hope you're moving forward, and as you move forward, you're getting better at algebra. Thank you.